but they need a really big crisis to make everybody fearful enough to accept what they want to stuff down our throats. Well, I don't want a central bank to be doing that to me. They've done such a great job so far on robbing us of all of our purchasing power. And so I think one of the things I want people to know is you vote with your purse and your wallet, right? So if you keep all your wealth in the system, that's your vote. And that's what most people do because that they've been trained to think of that as traditional, but it's not traditional. It's only in the last hundred years or so that it's traditional. Mm -hmm. The real tradition is physical gold and silver. Popular economist and hardcore gold and silver stacker Lynette Zhang is genuinely worried about what is coming for the human race with the introduction of central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, and other instruments of complete dominance that have been plainly announced or hinted at by the world's elites. According to the former investment banker, these tools are often presented as minor upgrades to familiar instruments, so people readily accept them. As such, they would argue that CBDCs are only slightly different from fiat currencies and credit cards. However, as faulty as the present fiat system is, it is worlds apart from a central bank-controlled digital currency that could easily be manipulated with the press of a few buttons. According to Zhang, we are right on the precipice of entering another era, an era of CBDCs and extreme subjugation of the masses. The only solution, she believes, is to stack as many gold and silver bars as possible to give yourself some amount of freedom when the storm hits. In a recent interview with the Gold Silver Pro's YouTube channel, Zhang warns investors about the dangers of falling for the ploy of global leaders and elites. To do that, according to Zhang, is to sign over your freedom and democratic right to be a part of the decision-making process in your country. During the passionate and highly insightful discussion, Zhang also discussed the ongoing banking crisis in the United States and the struggle for multipolarity currently being led by China and Russia. With the barrage of pilling external and internal threats against the United States and the dollar's dominance on the international stage, Zhang says it's time for every investor to take the exit ramp and stack up on gold and silver. According to the former investment banker, these precious metals equate freedom and liberty for all that hold them. Before we listen to Zhang's interview, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications bell for more important expert investment tips on gold, silver, and copper. We love to hear from our viewers, so ensure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm, so we can continue to bring you these videos. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Well, there is absolutely no doubt but that uh, the dollar's position as the world reserve currency is is over. In fact, I've never seen the dollar have this low. I think it's, uh, I may not be exactly accurate, but I'll be pretty close. I believe that only 47%, uh, the dollar makes up only 47% of global reserves now. I mean, that's like nothing. And when you look at what's happening as in terms of GDP, but the BRICS nations are on course. They're actually, um, their, their contribution to GDP is higher than the G7's contribution to GDP. So there is absolutely 100% a major power shift that is happening as we transition from the current fiat system into the goal is the new fiat system being more controlled, the CBDCs to your point. Uh, but I'm not sure that we should just lay down and go, okay, there's nothing we can do about it. Mm -hmm. I think that it's more if 3% if of the population understand what's happening and the dangers of actually going along with it, then I think we have a shot at something different. The bank failures caught people's attention, but they really put a lid on this piece mm -hmm. pretty quickly by bailing everybody out, which should have been a huge red flag, mm -hmm. right? Because who they really bailed out were hedge funds. That's who they bailed out. First time, you know, 2008, they bailed out the banks. This time they bailed out the hedge funds. So, um, and, and to your point, First Republic coming up because they're trying to sell assets that are well underwater because obviously when interest rates go up, then the market principal value goes down. So 
interest rates up really high. Now they're going to sell these assets at a huge loss. So they're just trying to avoid the FDIC taking them over because that makes it a little bit more visible. But I don't know that they have the ability to really avoid that. So the fuse is lit and it's not out. They want, they want you to think, oh, okay, we took care of it. It was just a one-off thing. It's not a one-off thing. Uh, but they need a really big crisis to make everybody fearful enough to accept what they want to stuff down our throats, which is total control through the CBDC. Because they've even said, we can keep our finger on that button and tweak what our policy is 24-7. Well, I don't want a central bank to be doing that to me. And you brought up Zimbabwe and you brought up their new CBDC that they're saying is going to be backed mm -hmm. by gold. So we have to see. But isn't that what happens 100 percent of the time when the public loses all confidence in the currency and in the system, then the new currency that they come out with in order to get people to use it is has some component of gold in there. So I think Zimbabwe is just showing us where we are headed, but what, 2022, they brought out the one ounce gold coin. Well, who can afford the one ounce gold coin in Zimbabwe, but the 1%, the elites, the normal public, they can't. So presumably they're doing the CBDCs so that the general public with whatever Zimbabwean dollars they're holding or other currencies that they're holding, can convert into a gold unit in this token. Um, I'm, I'm watching it to see what it really looks like. It won't be 100% backed, I'm sure. Zimbabwe announced the launch of a gold-backed central bank-controlled digital currency in April. According to the Zimbabwean Central Bank, it plans to start issuing the digital currency on May 8th. The gold-backed digital currency will be backed by the gold held at the Reserve of Zimbabwe and is expected to complement the physical gold coins that started circulating about a year ago. The African country, which has experienced one of the worst currency debasement and hyperinflation in history, is hoping to fight local currency depreciation with the gold-backed digital currency and encourage de-dollarization within the country. At the peak of its first currency devaluation crisis in February 2009, one U.S. dollar was worth 300 trillion Zimbabwe dollars. A few months before, in September 2008, it was 1,000 Zimbabwean dollars to one USD. This extreme hyperinflation led to the adoption of the U.S. dollar as the country's primary currency. Now Zimbabwe hopes to discourage the dependence on the greenback with the new gold-backed currency initiative. As Zhang has stated, it is still unclear how Zimbabweans will receive the CBDC, or if the currency will be able to solve the many hardships faced by average Zimbabweans. Let's get back to Zhang's interview as she speaks further about the transition to CBDCs and the importance of gold and silver in the new era we are about to enter. Back in the early 70s when they transferred us from or transitioned us from uh, at least a quasi gold back system into a debt based system, mm -hmm. I don't really remember and I don't remember my parents or my aunts and uncles that would meet every Friday night and have these conversations where I learned a ton. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I don't think they had a big national discussion there either. What they do when they make these transitions is they try and keep it as normal to what people are used to as possible. So, you know, their not intention is to not pull cash from the market, even though fewer and fewer people are using cash for you know transactions because then it would be obvious and i think it was karstens i don't remember his name his first name but at the at the uh, imf in a report a year or so ago a couple of years ago where he was saying now look when people go to the grocery store with a cbdc it's going to look exactly like if they went to the grocery store with a credit card or a debit card it'll be different but people will not notice it. So I don't think they really want to open up a national conversation to get whether or not people want to use it. I think that the way that they typically do it is there's some major crisis and I'm seeing all of the repeatable patterns, you know, war, civil rights, 
um, oil, energy issues, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of them. And every single one of them is in play right now. So mm -hmm. if we get a major crisis that scares enough people, and, and I think what happened in 2020 was a test, right? How, uh, what can we get away with? And um, then they're just going to try and make this transition. And hopefully people will, will adopt it. I mean, we all have those FedNow accounts. We all have them. Mm -hmm. They put them in in what, 2019? Mm -hmm. That was the announcement, right? Well, you weren't planning on launching it until 2023. So why did you announce it and put everything in place in 2019, right? Mm hmm um, but then we have a crisis. I mean, we are definitely going into a recession. I mean, the Fed is definitely getting what they want with fewer and fewer people employed. Mm -hmm. You know, what Disney is laying off a whole bunch of people now. UBS is laying off a whole bunch of people. So, I mean, because it is people asking for more money for wages because of inflation. That's what's causing the inflation. It's not all of their, you know, money printing that they've done. <laughs> <laughs> or the way that they have chosen winners and losers and all that other garbage. No, 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 no. So yeah, I certainly trust them. Not. There are a couple things, but mostly it's the mantra, right? You want to be as independent and self-sufficient as possible. So that's food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth, preservation, community, and shelter. Mm -hmm. That's where you have the physical metals that come in that are in your possession that are actually truly invisible. And you have to be creating that community so that we can come together and help each other. Because if you stay inside of the system, you're dependent completely on the system, then they got gotcha. you. Then you have to do what they want you to do in order to survive. Mm -hmm. So you have, to, you have to counter that. We vote with our wallets, that's how we vote. So putting in your food source, your energy source, putting your water source, all of that, securing that, that's the only way, in my opinion, that we can do this. However gloomy, Zhang's predictions for the U.S. and the U.S. dollar are not unbelievable or far-fetched. While speaking at a recent meeting of the Council for Local Self-Government Development, Russian President Vladimir Putin talked about changing geopolitical dynamics and the trend toward a multipolar world. He said, the trend toward multipolarity in the world is inevitable. It will only intensify, and those who do not understand this and do not follow this trend will lose. It is an absolutely obvious fact, Putin added. It is as obvious as the sunrise. Nothing can be done about it. Those who try to prevent this will only face additional problems that they already have. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov echoed the same sentiments while speaking before the participants of the World Online Conference on Saturday. Lavrov said, the attempts to establish a unipolar world order with a sole decision-making center in Washington have failed. Today, the movement towards global multipolarity is a fact, a geopolitical reality. The Russian foreign minister also stated that new global centers are springing up primarily in Eurasia, the Asia-Pacific region, the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America. He added, the facts speak for themselves. Over the past three decades, the share of the G7 countries in the global economy has significantly decreased while the influence of emerging markets is growing steadily. We are witnessing the continued transformation of the structure of international relations. With Russia, China, and other BRICS nations and their allies uniting against the United States, is this the end for the United States and the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency? Please drop your replies as well as your comments on Lynette Zhang's interview in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video. Subscribe to the channel and check out our other videos featuring some of the brightest minds in the investment world. Thanks for watching.